Are you looking to play Resto Druid, the jack of all trades in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, professions, and of course macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top healing, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. As a druid, you can only be a Night Elf or Tauren in Wrath. There are no other options besides that. Both factions are great. However, Tauren is probably the better option due to its consistency in the form of War Stomp. With this racial ability, you're able to do combos like Stomp into a Cyclone, or even just use it as a micro CC to stop casts. Taurens also have a bit more health. This isn't a big deal, but it is worth mentioning. Night Elves gain access to Shadow Meld, which is arguably the hardest ability to use well in WoW. This also makes it much less consistent than Tauren. This is because it can be used in a variety of different ways. When used, you drop Combat, which allows you to drink on the spot, or even go Cat and re-stealth. All projectiles that are mid-air coming towards you are immune as well, which means that if timed correctly allows you to avoid scatter shots, chaos bolts, lava bursts, aim shots, you name it. Instant abilities like Blind and Hammer of Justice can also be immune. However, this requires you to press Shadow Meld at the exact same time your opponent uses their ability, making this outplay very, very inconsistent. As a Night Elf, you also gain access to Quickness that reduces your chance to get hit. The default hit chance at level 80 is 5%, however, versus Night Elves, it is 7% due to this passive. This means that if players can have below 7% hit chance, then they can miss Blinds, Kidney Shots, Aimed Shots, any ability. Next up, we're going to go over talents, covering the most noteworthy ones for druids in PvP. The default build for Resto Druids in Wrath is what you see on screen. We don't recommend running Living Seed, even though it's one of the most iconic Resto talents in Wrath. This is because it only procs off your largest heals whenever they crit, and critting a spell like Nourish means your talent might be at 100% anyway, resulting in overhealing from Living Seed. Moving on, Revitalize is insane when playing with classes like Warriors, Rogues, and DKs, because their damage is heavily gated behind resource management, which is greatly assisted with this talent. Next up, Improved Barkskin causes you to be much more tanky outside of Bear, which means doing things like kiting around in travel form won't be as punishing. It also causes Barkskin to be practically undispellable due to the 70% dispel protection from this talent, as well as the 30% dispel protection from Subtlety, which gives your helpful spells and dots dispel protection as well. This may seem trivial to some, however, if you've ever played Wrestle Druid into a Priest or a Shaman spam purging you, then you know just how important this talent is. One of the biggest changes to Restoration Druids in Wrath is the addition of Improved Tree of Life. This talent greatly increases your armor while in tree, making bear form much less important, while allowing you to actually heal while being trained. It's important to note that bear still grants you more armor than tree form, so being in bear for stun setups will still be better. Natural Perfection hasn't changed since TBC, but that doesn't mean it's no longer one of your best talents. It grants you passive damage reduction when people target you, but more importantly, since the buff is magic and stacks up to three times, it makes for excellent dispel protection. Next up, there's Swift Mend, which outside of nature's swiftness is your only direct non-periodic instant heal. It allows you to move around and heal yourself or your teammates while avoiding CC, and should be combined with Glyph of Swift Mend to increase your globals, but more on that later. Nature's Swiftness is your major cooldown that allows you to cast pretty much anything instantly. This ability can be used in a ton of different ways, however, it's most commonly used with Healing Touch to completely top someone to full HP. It can, however, be used with Cyclone as well. If an enemy DPS has no trinket and they're dealing tons of damage, then putting them in a full Cyclone will sometimes actually prevent more damage than a Healing Touch. If you're interested in more in-depth and advanced usages of NS, check out the Resto Druid playstyle courses on our website. Wild Growth is your new restoration ability in Wrath, which adds another hot to your toolkit. Since it applies to all allies within 15 yards, it's incredibly strong for whatever you need to heal multiple targets. And finally, saving the best for last, we have Gift of the Earth Mother. This talent makes your healing rotation more fluid because it causes your most used ability, Life Bloom, to have one of the shortest global cooldowns in the game. It makes it incredibly easy to put your hots on someone. The talent also gives you 10% permanent haste, which is completely broken due to haste 
haste being your best stat. When playing 2v2, you don't really need the additional healing granted from Wild Growth, so you can move some talents around to get access to Insect Swarm and Bramble. Insect Swarm is super nice for the additional damage at a very low mana cost. It also decreases the hit chance of the target, which means spells like Blind and Kidney Shot can miss even though the player is actually hit capped. Bramble is super underrated. Not only does it increase your thorns damage to respectable levels, it also causes anyone who's attacking you while your bark skin is active to have a 15% chance to be dazed. This makes kiting infinitely easier while under pressure. Now it's time to cover glyphs. There are quite a few options to choose from, so let's jump in. Starting off with your major glyphs, we have Glyph of Barkskin. This is a must have in any situation, but especially versus melee classes since they rely heavily on landing those crits in order to actually kill you. Glyph of Swift Men grants you mana, globals, and increases your overall healing. This is because you'll no longer be having to reapply the hot you've consumed with Swift Men, and means you'll be saving mana and globals that you can then use on other things. And for your final major glyph, we recommend the Glyph of Rejuvenation. With Wrath being so incredibly bursty in Season 5, being able to rely on massive rejuvenation ticks whenever someone on your team is low is massive. This is especially true if you're stuck in CC and have to rely on those hots to save you in the game. And now for your miners, starting off with Glyph of the Wild. This is your only real important miner glyph, so if you're struggling for cash, prioritize getting this one. It makes rebuffing Mark of the Wild not completely destroy your mana bar, which is super nice. For your last two options, we have Glyph of Dash and Glyph of Thorns. Neither of these minor glyphs are super important and won't make much of an impact in your games, however, they're the best ones available. Now it's time to go over your gear, starting off with your Prebis, followed by your final best in slot. Let's first cover your stat priority, which is what dictates which items and gems you'll want. Spell power is the highest priority simply due to the fact that it allows you to heal more while being in CC with your hots, as well as allowing you to do a considerable amount of healing while spam applying life bloom whenever you or your teammates are being spam purged. You're going to prioritize resilience over everything else in Season 5 because it's incredibly hard to get a lot of it, making it the second highest priority. We prioritize haste over MP5 in Season 5 due to the fact that the game state is so bursty that you're going to get much more value from being able to cast faster and much more frequently. Now for the gear list, we're going to start off with the Prebis set. The gear set consists primarily of items that you can buy with honor points, which is easily grindable, BOEs, which you can buy from the auction house, and dungeon gear from normal and heroics. For your full Bis set, the majority of your gear comes from PvP, which means you won't need to rely too much on the RNG gods when raiding. There are still a few items from raids that you'll want, but it's nowhere near the amount of items other classes need for their full bis set. You'll want to swap out the offhand and idle depending on the matchup. The Grimoire is only really useful versus mages and druids due to its high amount of spell penetration. So whenever you're fighting anything else, we recommend you swap it out for something with better stats. The Idol of Mush only helps your life blooms periodic ticks, which means if your blooms are getting spam purged, then you're not getting any value at all from this idol. Thus, it's useful to swap it out for the Idol of Tenacity, which directly affects the final bloom. For your gems, we recommend that you get your hands on the Stun Reduction Meta Socket. The primary reason for this is so that you can't get sapped off kidney shots, as well as making you harder to kill in stuns. Following the stat priority, it should be no surprise that you'll want resilience gems in yellows, spell power gems in reds, and spell power MP5 split gems in blues. Next up, we have professions, which for Resto Druids is a little different than other classes. You want to get jewel crafting and blacksmithing. This is because it results in higher resilience overall. Although engineering is nice due to the high damage output from the glove enchant, as a druid, you don't really play offensive. You're more of a defensive class, so the extra damage doesn't really serve the purpose of your role. Jewel crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of amplified gems that you can only have three of. This is huge since normal epic gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the jewel crafting exclusives that much bigger. Blacksmithing gives you an extra socket slot in your wrists and gloves. Like we mentioned earlier, this is amazing since it allows us to stack even more resilience. This is especially good in Season 5 where getting a lot of resilience is difficult. Even though it is expensive to level, blacksmithing will become insanely strong when epic gems will be widely available. 
And finally, we have macros. As a druid, you can have more keybinds compared to other classes. Luckily, macros can help fix that issue. Starting off light, we have a standard focus macro for cyclone, entangling roots, and fairy fire. Focus macros are a must-have for PvP since it allows you to use key spells without having to change your target. However, if you're ready to up your game, using the Arena 123 variant is even better. These six macros allow you to cyclone or root anyone on the enemy team without having to actually target or even focus them. The main downside of this is is that it's incredibly keybind intensive, which is why you should get your hands on some keybind efficient macros. In Wrath, you're able to power shift, which is a term that refers to shape shifting without actually leaving the form, in order to remove snare effects. This is especially important for travel forms, since this is the form you'll be using for kiting. This does mean, though, that you're no longer able to leave your form by recasting it. You can use healing spells to leave form, but you can also create a cancel form macro. This has the added benefit of being able to leave forms while being on the global cooldown. Moving along, Pounce can only be cast during stealth, but unlike rogues, you don't have a stealth bar. To save space, you can create a macro that changes your prowl bind to Pounce when you're in stealth, making it the perfect 2-in-1 combo. And finally, the standard app player Innervate Macro. This one simply casts Innervate on yourself. This is nice since you very, very rarely want to cast Innervate on anyone but yourself. Now you are ready to start your PvP journey. To go even further, be sure to check out Skillcap to see our exclusive healing and playstyle courses designed by some of the best resto druids in the world. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 rating when actively using our website, and if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. Sign up today using the discount code below. And with that, the Resto Druid Starter Guide concludes. We appreciate you guys for watching till the end, and hope to see you soon.